Hey there, it's Java Seal, and welcome back to Sonic is Too Fast for the Highway. Okay, so, oh my gosh, there's no comma here. Okay, we are back to our speeding ticket simulator, and we have just declared all of our variables way to go. But now, we are getting ready to prompt the police officer for the information about the violator. And what we're going to do is create a scanner for the keyboard, so that way when a police officer types something in, we actually can sense it and record that information. So we're going to make a thing, an object, that is actually called a scanner. Okay, so the scanner, we're going to just call it keyboard, because that's what we're scanning, equals new. And look, it turned blue, so that means you typed it right, scanner. And then system in. System dot in. Good. Boink. All right, so now we're going to be actually putting up words into our command prompt. So that way the police officer can actually see what we want from him. So we're going to do this thing. You're going to see this a lot within your code. It's system dot out dot print. All right, so this means whatever we type in these brackets right here next to it is going to show up in this command prompt when we run our program. So you can type like words in here, be like, what's up, within quotes, or you can even type in an existing variable name. So say age, and then your age, the number, not the word, will show up. But we're going to be writing a, an instruction for the police officer right here. It's going to say, please enter last name. We're really polite here. We're going we're gonna to say please. In our commands. Come on, guys. All right. Then we're gonna put this. This is just for space and for making things look fancy. Also, to keep your your lines of of uh, commands right here separate from each other when they're displayed in the command prompt, we can put new line or ln <laughs> line new right after connected to the system dot print line. So now that the police officer sees what we want from them, they're going to be typing in the violator's last name. And so we're going to have our variable that we declared up there as a string, last name, and we're going to set it equal to what we see in the keyboard. So we say keyboard dot next. So what's ever in there next. Then when the police officer is done typing in the violator's last name, they hit enter, and then they're going to be prompted with this next thing. So a re good reason why this is a great starting program is a lot of these things is are redundant, so we're just going to copy paste. Programmers that copy paste are good programmers because they're reusing stuff. All right, so some of that out print line, we're all a bit of efficiency here. Enter first name. And we change this to first. Great. Then to keep these lines of commands right here separate, we can actually put a blank system dot out print line to keep things clean. I'm not sure if I did that in the in my other program that I wrote. And we can keep those brackets empty. And we keep them empty here. Bop. Okay. And we're gonna keep doing this for all of our different variables, we're going to do age next. Oh, I lost something. Enter age. Now, age is not a string. This this is expecting strings right here, but we're going to put next int. Remember, numbers are ints. <laughs> of course you remember, that was like just the last video. Okay. Also, we need an int again. System.print has to be capitalized. Just trust me. Enter speed. Speed limit it. Enter. We're going to do actual speed.
actual speed that the violator is going. So, Sonic's crazy. 200 miles an hour. Crazy. Oh no, this doesn't match. We have to match. It's case sensitive. Which is good because then you have lots of choices for calling variable things. Then we're gonna also ask if the violator was in a construction zone. And we have to tell the police officer that we're looking for a yes or no answer. Was violator in construction. Wow, even spell checks is so cool. Zone. Enter. Yes. Or no. Maybe so. It's not an int. That is a string that you are receiving. If they actually type in yes or no. They might just type in one or zero and you'll break it. Was the violator under the influence? Enter yes or no. Good. Okay, so that is all the prompts that we have for our police officer. And next we're going to be calculating to see if the violator was even going under the speed limit in the first place. Maybe the ray gun or the police officer just pulled someone over without really checking their speed, but they thought they were going over the speed limit. Now you can actually calculate if they're going over the speed limit or not. And we're gonna, I'm gonna type in some comments here. When you do this double slash, you can write comments. So I can like write words and that does not affect the program whatsoever. So I'm gonna slap in some octothropes, not hashtags. Please stop everyone. And we're gonna be dealing with the speed calculations. So I'm just gonna make that very clear. And it, we're still in the main program even though I'm making these barriers. Okay, so we're gonna be starting our first conditions in programming. Oh, you guys, you're getting so old, I'm so proud. Okay, if, if and else, we can have conditions and comparisons like if one thing is greater than or equal than, do this. Just like we're gonna do right here. So if the actual speed is greater than the speed limit, then obviously they're going over the speed limit. But we need to know that, like it's important. And we have these brackets again that you saw encasing our whole main program and our public class. And this is where we put what happens if this condition is true. And if the actual speed is greater than the speed limit, then we can assign over, which is the amount of miles over, this int variable as the actual speed minus the speed limit. Cool. Yeah. Then, if, if that condition is not true, then we need the program to do something else. So we're going to put else. Also the brackets. Try to keep these lined up so your code looks nice and if other people go look at it, they're going to understand what you're typing. We're going to make over equal to zero. Cool. Now we are going to set up how much we're gonna fine Sonic for speeding and we're going to do some more if and else cases. We're gonna use if, we're gonna use if, or yeah, we're gonna use if, we're gonna use else if, so that's another condition, and else. Great. So if our Sonic is going just five, less than five miles over the speed limit. Like that's not a big deal. Usually people just brush that off, and we're gonna we're gonna brush that off because sometimes you have to go a little bit over the speed limit to maybe pass someone or to keep up with the flow. Of
we're gonna type this if and then the case over if over the speed limit was less than five miles over the speed limit then we're gonna brush it off say you know what you're just you're just keeping up with traffic you're just trying to um, pass somebody that's all right you know we're gonna make the base or the amount of fines that you have equal to zero so you're gonna be charged zero dollars for going less than five miles over the speed limit even if you are technically going over the speed limit we're gonna have another case else if this condition is not true I'm gonna separate these again I don't want to get that confused Octothropes. Okay. Else, if, here's another condition, if you are traveling less than or equal to 20 miles over the speed limit, like that's still pretty fast, so we're gonna, we're gonna start charging them stuff. And we're gonna just give them a flat rate for anything equal to or less than 20 miles an hour over the speed limit to be 70 bucks. You know what? You can buy so many pizzas. Don't do it. Don't speed. Okay. So that's going to be one of our conditions right there. Now the last condition, else if you're just you're just zooming. You're going over. You're going over 20 miles an hour. Wow, greater than 12 miles an hour. That's when stuff starts getting serious. If you're going sonic fast, we're going to take the base and we're going to set it equal to over times five. So every mile over the limit you're going, that's five, no wait, that's not five bucks, that's ten bucks. We're going to make it a really big deal if you're speeding 20 miles over 20 miles an hour. All right, so that's that's just your basic, your speeding fines. Now we're gonna get to our zone fines.